Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, No More Barriers, Dr. McLuhan teaches from Ephesians chapter 2 that Jesus broke the religious barriers that separate people from each other and God. The letter of Ephesians begins with a list of no less than 14 blessings that are given to those who follow Jesus. I hope you'll become curious enough to go back and listen to last week's message and learn about your spiritual inheritance. Over the next couple chapters, uh, Paul teaches how to put the blessings of chapter 1 into practice in our lives. Uh, Chapter 2 begins with what our lives were like before we met Jesus. It's a grim picture. Paul is actually referring to what happened to humanity when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and their lives became evil. Paul said we were dead in trespasses and sins in which we once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carried out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of humanity. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Now Paul teaches that when we turned to salvation, turned to Jesus for salvation, uh, before we turned to Jesus for salvation, we were dead in sin, following the spirit of disobedience and doing whatever we wanted to do. That's a lot of darkness. And were it not for the grace of God, we would still be living that way. Where would we be without God? And Paul said, but God. <laughs> I'm so glad for the but gods that are found all through the pages of the Bible. In the course of living, I've done some pretty foolish things. But God <laughs> stepped in to help me. Who can testify that you've had a but God who dawned upon you and helped you, turned your life around. (laughs) Your circumstances, he helped you find a better way. He stepped into where you were. He didn't reject you when you were going the wrong way. In fact, it was when we were going the wrong way that he found us and stepped into our lives. Paul said, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. I'm so glad for the mercy of God who loved me so much and he opened my eyes to see the great price that Jesus paid to come alive spiritually. God not only raised Jesus from the dead, He raised everyone from the dead who chooses to follow him. God did not raise us from the dead to leave us alone. He raised us from the dead to have a close personal relationship with him. He transitioned us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, from death to life. He opened our eyes to see things that we never saw before. How many of you said to yourself, I can't believe I didn't see it before. All my life I was blind, but now I see. My eyes have been opened to who Jesus is and what he did for us. Paul continues, he raised us up with him and seated us in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. What a powerful statement. In chapter 1, we learn that Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. In chapter 2, we learn that followers of Jesus are seated with him in the heavenly places, in the presence of God. What a delightful thought. We are already seated in heaven. I know you're seated here or wherever you're watching, but spiritually, you're already seated in heaven. (laughs) What an awesome way to live. What a way to look at life. What a way to have a perspective of heaven. 
on everything that we are going through here on earth. Now, all of this is because the grace and kindness of God can never be measured. I don't know about you and me, but sometimes I I feel uncomfortable in the presence of super generous people. Of course, those people don't feel uncomfortable. They just want us to be blessed. And God just doesn't want you to feel uncomfortable by his generosity. He just wants you to receive. Don't ever tell God that's enough. (laughs) Just more, Lord, more, because he has more to give than you ever imagined. And Paul goes on to release one of the greatest statements in the Bible on how to become a follower of Jesus or a child of God. By grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Salvation is a gift. Salvation cannot be earned. No one can be good enough to earn salvation. And there's no place in heaven for people who think they deserve to be there or who boast about it. Salvation is a gift given by God to all who wish to receive it. Let's hear this verse one more time. For by grace you've been saved through faith. And this not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works that nobody would boast. Again, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Some listening to this message are hearing these words for the very first time. This message may seem unbelievable because you have tried your whole life to do enough good to be accepted by God. And yet these words offer the living hope that you have longed for. Salvation is not earned. It is received. And so what is required to receive a gift? Simply accept it. When our parents give us gifts, we don't ask them what we have to do to earn it or how much we have to pay them now because we received this gift. We just enjoy it. God wants you to enjoy the gift of salvation. Paul says our part is, is to place our faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross. So salvation is not a reward for doing good things. It is simply a gift that needs to be accepted. Now you might say to me, I don't have faith to believe that what you're saying to me is true. Well, I'm not saying it. Paul is and the Bible is and the Holy Spirit is. But here's the good part. Ask God to give you the faith you need to believe in Jesus. People say to me, I don't believe in Jesus. Well, he'll believe in you before you'll believe in him. (laughs) Isn't that wonderful? Didn't Jesus believe in you before you believed in him? The faith we need to believe in Jesus is also a gift from God. You might say, I don't believe in the cross. but (laughs) Jesus did. And he'll give you the faith to believe that what he did was for you. Ask Jesus to give you faith right now. An invitation is being extended to you right now to accept God's gift of salvation. Say with me, thank you, God, for sending Jesus to die for me in my place on the cross so that I can receive the gift of salvation. If you just prayed with me to accept God's gift of salvation, write to me and let me know about your decision to follow Jesus. Now, accepting God's gift of salvation opens doors for more blessing than you could ever imagine. And so Paul continues saying that followers of Jesus are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works with God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. God has prepared good things for those who follow Jesus to do. And one of the great joys of following Jesus is discovering and doing the good things that God has planned for his followers to do. He has such good plans for you and for me. What is amazing is that God prepared these plans for each of us to follow long before we knew Jesus or believed in him. Remember, I said he believed in you before you believe in him. (laughs) Paul said, these good deeds don't earn salvation. They demonstrate 
that salvation has come to our house, to our life. It is so freeing to be able to help people out of the goodness that God has put into our hearts rather than being motivated to do good by trying to earn points to please God. Being kind to people flows out of the kindness that God has shown to us. And now that Paul has helped us understand salvation better, he is ready to explain more about the blessings of the death of Jesus on the cross. It brought so much into our lives, most of us have only scratched the surface of the blessings of God. Paul wants us to know more. Religion, you may agree with me, has a way of dividing people. Have you felt like you were in with one group and out with another group? Religion divides people all over the world. Religion is filled with barriers between people. And the greatest divide between people in the Old Testament was the division between Jews and Gentiles. That's you and me. God opened the eyes on the death of the cross, that, asking God to open your eyes to see that, that by the death of of Jesus on the cross. This barrier was broken. This is how Paul put it. He was writing to you and to me, to Gentiles. The New Living Translation puts it this way. You were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship amongst the people of Israel. Gentiles were out. And you did not know the covenant promises God had made with them. That whatever God promised to them doesn't belong to us. That's how we used to think. You lived in this world without God and without hope. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12. I'm so glad that people write to me and thank me for the message title of this whole program called Living Hope. We want people who are without hope to have hope and feel the barriers between them and God have been broken down. Paul goes on to say, But now, there's another but from heaven. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ brings us near to God. The blood of Christ covers all that darkness and enables us to be in his presence. The blood of Jesus on the cross makes it possible for people from every race, color, ethnicity to come close to God. No one has an advantage over another. Everyone has equal access to God. Wow, we're made in his image. Someone asked me, how is this possible? It's possible because of what Jesus did on the cross. Paul continues, he himself is our peace who made both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Ephesians chapter 2 And verse 14, this is a picture of a dividing wall that separated Jews and Gentiles in the temple complex in the first century. There was a barrier around the temple past which Gentiles were not allowed to walk. It is the worst religious barrier in the time of Jesus. And before Jesus, uh, before Paul met Jesus, he had devoted his whole life to protecting that barrier and all that it represented. But now, after Jesus opened his eyes, he no longer saw any need for it. Jesus broke the spiritual, emotional, and physical walls that exist between people and God to break them completely so that everyone has access to him. This is the first most important barrier that Jesus broke. But in Ephesians... Paul writes about other barriers that Jesus broke, like the barriers between free and slave, the barriers between men and women. And how did God do this? He came and preached peace to you who are far off and peace to those who are near. Through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. You have access. Just say with me, I have access. I have access. <laughs> Preacher doesn't have special access. Your grandmother didn't have special access. Access is given to everyone who wants it. 
you have access to heaven. You have access for help. You have access for healing. You have access for resources. Anything you need, heaven, the windows of heaven are open, and you have access to the Father. The chapter 2 ends with a clear picture of the relationship that God wants to have with all of his followers. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place by the Spirit, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 22. Don't let anybody tell you God doesn't, can't have a relationship with you or doesn't want to have a relationship with you. That's like having a child and saying, I don't want to have a relationship with that child. God cannot not have a relationship with you. His love is so great. His mercy is so great. He paid such a tremendous price for you and I to have access with him. God longs to live in our hearts. He wants his spirit to be in you and upon you. Invite the spirit of God to feel at home in your heart. Go on, say it with me. Come, Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit, fill everyone listening with your presence. Fill people watching around the world today. Feel the presence of God coming upon you like a warm blanket on a cool evening. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do for you, that you know you can talk to God. You can have communion with God. He will speak to you. You can hear his voice and he will guide you in what to do. You don't have to guess at what God wants. You don't have to hope you can be pleasing to him. You can hear the voice of God. Amen. What a great chapter. It begins with how dark our lives were before we met Jesus. We learned that salvation is a gift that cannot be earned. We learned that Jesus is the one who breaks all barriers of religion and society that divide people. We discover that Jesus accomplished all these things on the cross so that we can have a close relationship with God. I pray that as you have listened to this message, that God has opened your eyes to see how much God loves you and wants to have a relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us on the cross. Thank you that you are the great barrier breaker and whatever it is that you're trying to go through, in the name of Jesus, go through by the power of God. Find new life, new hope, and new help as you live a life pleasing to God. Thank you, Jesus. You receive Jesus as your Savior today. Write to me and let me know what God did for you today. Jesus, thank you for earning salvation for us with your perfect life, your sacrifice and resurrection we gratefully, humbly receive this amazing gift. Help us to go through life as your well-loved children, reaching across every wall that separates people from your love. In Jesus' barrier-breaking name we pray, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with Living Hope.